Tosei had three games on October 27th? The realization that everyone's favorite contract developer had gotten busy made me double-check, and it turns out that they didn't develop the final game for the 27th. So at least tomorrow we won't have a Tosei game. But today, Tosei returns to a cash cow. Dragon Ball 3 Gokuden uses the exact same system as the previous Dragon Ball game. There's a handful of small tweaks to it, but really it's the same. Of course, everyone knows that Dragon Ball is about the Goku family and their generational adventures. They possess psychic abilities that manifest as a figure that appears beside them, and they often come into conflict with people who have similar abilities. The first Dragon Ball game covered the story from the beginning up to about two-thirds of the way through the Red Ribbon Army story arc. The second Dragon Ball game jumped ahead and covered the King Piccolo arc. So obviously the third game covers the rest of the story, maybe even getting into some of the bits that are being translated into the new Dragon Ball Z television show. And you'd be wrong. Instead, Dragon Ball 3 Gokuden covers all of the story that had been translated into the television show Dragon Ball. It even does the King Piccolo arc all over again. And the game for that one used the exact same mechanics as this game. Dragon Ball 3 is a board game RPG adventure thing. Most of it is played out with a hand of five cards that you're dealt. The number in the upper left is used for attack power and movement. The number in the lower right is the defense value for the card. And the symbol in the middle is the type of attack that you'll do. Most of the game will be spent wandering an overworld map that looks like a board game. Here you play a card to move a certain number of spaces. The blank spaces usually don't have anything, though rarely you'll get an encounter there. The scroll is a training session where you have to match or beat the value of a card that you're presented with. The question marks are a random event. You could wind up trading out one of your cards, or maybe your entire hand. The bubble building will grant you a random item. And the skulls are the most important one, because that's where you fight somebody. The way that battles work is that either you or your opponent decides how many cards will be played in that round. Who gets to decide is random. After that, you pick out the cards that you're going to play against them in the order that they'll be played. Then you compare each card in turn. Whoever has the higher attack value gets to attack, and the other side has to defend. Just because your defense value is high doesn't mean you won't take any damage from an attack either. One important thing to note about Dragon Ball 3 is that anytime you play a card, it's replenished immediately. So after a combat round, you'll have a full hand of five cards and get to do it all again. Something you should be aware of is that there's no healing in combat, and the only way you can recover health is by using an item, which you'll either find after combat or get from a location. It's actually pretty hard to get Goku past level 1. It takes a fair amount of experience points to do it, and if you die, it's game over. You can get a password at any point on the map. Hit select to bring up this menu, and that's where you can use your items, check out the local area, find out what Goku's current stats are, and get a password. As you're exploring on the board game map, sometimes you'll find big squares with locations in them. These take you to adventure game segments, and you can't do these out of order. If you go to the location for a later story, nothing happens. The adventure game segments play out similarly to other Famicom adventure games. You just pick out your verb and see what happens. While you can power through them by just doing every task, this is one of those adventure games where you have to do the same action over and over again until suddenly it does something different. The board game map that you start out on isn't the entire game. After you do enough adventures for that chapter, you move on to the next block. If you level up, then you get to assign some points to Goku's stats. However, this point assignment only appears after battle screens. So if you level up due to training, you have to go get into a fight before you can increase your abilities. It was really difficult to get started in Dragon Ball 3. I died a lot until I figured out the trick. And that trick is, don't fight. Just position yourself on the training grounds over and over and over again. You get a lot more experience for doing those, and there's no risk. Every board game map has a maximum level, 
and you can power yourself up to it pretty easily by using this technique. Now, I didn't get to see these myself because I didn't make much progress, but apparently the stats are not well balanced in this game. Your four stats are Speed, Power, Technique, and Toughness. Now, which of those do you think you raise to attack better? The answer is Speed. You see, Speed is the only thing that determines the outcome of the random battles. While for the battles with the major characters, their stats are set dependent on what Gokus are. You have to have some power technique to deal with bosses, but increasing your toughness also increases the boss's hit points. So you should only put points into toughness to account for the random battles. This hybrid board game RPG format is used in a lot of Dragon Ball games, but Dragon Ball 3 is kind of special in this regard, because it's the one of these that got a remake. Fifteen years after its release, Dragon Ball 3 is remade for the Wonder Swan Color. It was actually one of the very last Wonder Swan games. I really didn't make a lot of progress in Dragon Ball 3. I mean, even less than I usually do when I face with an RPG. This was not a friendly game to get into, and mechanically, it's really unpleasant. Choosing what cards you're going to play should involve some trade-offs, but it never feels like it does in Dragon Ball. Since defense isn't really effective, it's better to just fire off all your attack cards and accept that you might go slow as you're getting around the board. You're not playing from a deck, it's just making random selections for all the values on the card. So it's not like playing something powerful now will force you to play something weak later. This is better than the previous Dragon Ball board game, mainly for having a wider scope, but there really isn't a whole lot of gameplay here.